Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's questions answered video. The question is, how do you care for your self-defense ammunition? Now, for a lot of people watching this video, the firearm that you use for self-defense is probably most likely gonna be the firearm that you use for your practice and your, for your training. Uh, not everybody has a luxury of having two near identical or very identical firearms where they use one just for practice and one just for training. If it's something you can afford in your budget, I highly recommend it because then it minimizes the chances for failure, wear, and tear on your actual self-defense gun while you're able to train with the exact same firearm. Uh, my everyday carry is an agency field uh, 17. Uh, different sight configuration. I'm a big fan of the RMR, as you guys know. Um, <clears throat> my chosen carry round is either 147 grain gold dock or 147 grain federal HST. Uh, I got a lot of reasons for that. I've talked about it in other videos. If you ever come to a vehicle class or a home defense class, you'll learn exactly why I prefer the ballistics of those two rounds versus uh, some of the other rounds that are out there. But the ammunition that's in this gun is my self-defense ammunition. It's the ammunition that I take the most seriously, so the care of it is something that I take really seriously. Uh, if I'm going to use this gun for practice or for training or for demonstration purposes, I'm probably not going to be shooting defensive ammunition, although I might. So the rounds that are in the gun uh, have to come out. Uh, as far as unloading procedures, I'm not going to insult anyone's intelligence. I take out the magazine first, and then I rack the slide clear. Now the gun is made safe. Now, say I had to unload the gun to fly, or I had to unload the gun to shoot ammunition, or for whatever, or for shoot different ammunition, training ammunition, ball ammunition, whatever. For whatever reason, I've now completed that cycle, and it's time to reload. First thing I'm going to do is put that round right back on top of the magazine. Then I can safely rechamber the gun, and I'm in carry condition again. Uh, the question, the question you should be asking yourself is. How many times is it acceptable to rechamber that same round? Again, we're talking about handguns first, but how many times should I, just being realistic, chamber that same round before I don't trust that round anymore? The reason I bring this up is there have been documented cases of rounds being chambered too many times, and then when they were needed, failing to work. So how many chamberings is too many chamberings? There is no bright line magic number there. Uh, you do a little bit of research. There's one rather infamous or famous, depending on when we look at a case, from Lawrenceville here in Georgia, uh, where an officer routinely uh, downloaded his uh, firearm, just like I showed you, except his difference was he would insert the magazine, chamber the round, remove the magazine, and then load the round that he'd previously unloaded from the gun. So those same two rounds were rotating through that chamber for a very, very long period of time, over 100 cycles. Uh, according to accounts. When he actually needed his firearm and he drew from the holster and the lethal force was justified and he was gonna go ahead and press, he went ahead and pulled the trigger and he got a click instead of a bang. And they later found through investigations the reason was the primer compound had been knocked out of the primer and it failed to ignite the powder which to discharge the rack. Uh, of course, he was able to you know, remember his training and his practice, tap rack, go back, reassess, do work. Um, now that's on the extreme side of things because he said, you know, he didn't know exactly how many times that he'd gone through that process of cycling those rounds, but um, it was at least over 100 by, uh, by the accounts that I've read. So how many is too many? My personal feeling is five. If I've chambered a round five times, it's time to get rid of that round. Now, I don't uh, practice with my carry gun that often, so it doesn't get unloaded that often. So if I get into a situation where I can't remember, When's the last time I unloaded this? I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a new round in the, in the chamber. Uh, reason being, uh, it's not the odds, it's the stakes. Granted, ammunition is expensive, but that one single round, that 30, 40 cents, uh, it just isn't worth the odds of having that round fail on me. So for my personal number is five. Five chamberings, or if I can't remember how many chamberings, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And like I said, I don't shoot this gun for practice that often, but I do fly with it, because wherever I go to teach a class, I'm taking my carry gun with me. Uh, so in a given month, three to four, five, six, ten flights, uh, depending on what I got going on. It's, it, I go through a lot of the self-defense ammo for that chambered round just because of that. Now, uh, I'm not a big press check guy. If you look on the internet, you can find an article I did years ago that I still get hate mail about. Uh, about basically went through the process of showing how press checks can inadvertently damage your round. The reason I don't press check is because I don't need to. The Glock has a loaded chamber indicator right here on the side, right there where the chamber is. That extractor will seat out and give you a tactile feel, a little bump, if you will, to let you me know the chamber's loaded. In daytime situations, I can actually look in and see that nickel color, so I know that there's a round in the chamber. In low light conditions, is probably the only time I would do a press check. 
Like I said, my gun is always loaded unless I've unloaded it. I treat every firearm as if it's loaded, but I also know, okay, conscious effort of unloading a firearm, conscious loading of loading a firearm. If the weapon has been in my control the entire time, I know the chamber is still loaded. I can trust that. And if I don't, I can feel and look. In a low light situation, a little bit different. I might not be able to see. At that situation, I might pull back a little and reach in and feel that brass. Uh, it works the same way for right-handed folks. Reach in, feel that brass, good to go. Now, strictly for anecdotal purposes, I have a factory new 147 grain gold dot right here. This round has never been chambered. Uh, and then I have these other two rounds right here. This round has been chambered, which one is it? Okay, this round has been chambered 20 times. This round has been chambered 50 times. And when I say chambered, I mean inserted into the top of a magazine, magazine inserted on slide lock, and then the slide release or over the top is done. So I have full power of the slide going forward to chamber that round. Uh, what I'm showing you now is what has occurred to the round after those repeated uh, chamberings. As you can see, both rounds that were chambered repeatedly have experienced setback versus the factory new never been chambered round. Is that a big deal? I guess it depends on how you look at it. I think it's a big deal because the ammunition is not designed to be in those to uh, under those tolerances. Is, are these rounds gonna fire? Uh, probably, but I don't like probably. I like yes. Uh, I like as yes as possible. Can this factory new round uh, malfunction and not fire, uh, not, not go off? Yeah, it's possible, but it's not as possible. Uh, the more human interaction you have with a round, the more chances of failure uh, we have. So that's why I have that five and done rule. What I do is I, you know, this, once that round's been chambered five times, or if I can't remember, I'm just gonna go ahead for the safety's sake and throw it in the bag. Uh, I go ahead and pull them all and collect them. And when I go to the range, I shoot them. Uh, once I've got a magazine or so's worth, I go ahead and shoot them. And every six months, I rotate out all of my carry ammunition. Every single round in that magazine gets fired. Every now and then, I get one that doesn't go off. And that's a little sobering. Uh, because it is, you know, it's on the list of possible things that can go wrong is a, is a round not to fire. In fact, it's one of the more common malfunctions is for a round just not to work because humans made the damn thing. Um, it, it's an object and it's got multiple parts and chemicals and things that are involved in its construction. So even with the best methods of manufacture, you can have things go wrong. So when it comes to handgun ammunition, and if you ask any ammunition manufacturer, they'll tell you our rounds are designed to be chambered once. Uh, and that brings us to rifles. So rifle is actually really easy for me. If the round has been in the chamber once, then it's done. Um, there, especially since I use AR variant firearms, every single time I chamber that round, I get that small light impact. Uh, well, I say every single time, it's gun dependent. Uh, some guns are a little worse than others and the older the firearm, the more likely it is to occur. But if I chamber a round for, for duty or for, for my home defense rifle, um, if I, for whatever reason, take that round out of the chamber to shoot the gun for practice or to clean it or just general maintenance or checking things out or what have you, that round is now dead to me. It goes in the range bag, it gets shot at some point, and I'm done with it. I just do not want to take the chance, just based on the way that rifles work versus the way that my striker fire Glock work, to just to risk it. Uh, is it gonna is it gonna shoot? I can't remember the last time I had one of those those chambered once rounds in the range bag that I loaded into a magazine and actually shot not go off. Uh, but again, it's 30, 40, 50 cents. Uh, depending on what kind of round that you use. So for me, it's just not worth the risk. I'm gonna go ahead and stack the odds in my favor. If it's been chambered once, I get rid of it. Uh, you'll see a lot of law enforcement agencies, police departments, that's, their, that's actually their policy with their patrol rifles. If the round gets chambered, then the round is done. You, it's, can no longer, it's no longer suitable for duty. Uh, so I think that's just a safe way to behave. Is it a little pedantic? Well, I'm pedantic. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and stack the odds in my favor again and get rid of that round just to prevent any potential failure point or minimize the number of failure points I can have in the event that my rifle is needed. I certainly hope that answers the question. Uh, I will probably do another ammunition centric video in the future, but something more range based versus just answering someone's question. Uh, but again, uh, for the handgun, five and done. For the rifle, one and done. Uh, and that's just generally the way that I, I treat my ammo. Uh, for, even with rifles, you know, after six months, that magazine, it all gets shot, it gets replaced. Grand scheme of things, yeah, I, I am, I'm spending money, but I'm gonna shoot ammo anyway. Um, and 30 rounds or, or however many rounds per magazine rifle or per magazine handgun in the grand scheme of things is not that big of an expense when it comes to my safety and the safety of anyone I choose to protect. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics, train accordingly.